Hey, math students, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the unit circle. Um, today, I want to combine a couple of things that we've talked about. One, the unit circle, and the other one is those special triangles that we looked at uh, uh, quite a while ago. Uh, if you remember, we looked at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we found out what the sine of 30 degrees was, uh, cosine of 30 degrees, tangent. Let me refresh your memory. Um, so 30 degrees is about like right here, right? And of course, that's what it is in degrees. We would call this pi over 6 if we were talking in radians. And uh, if you remember, the sine of 30 was a half, well, it still is, and the cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. So what that means is this point right here is the point root 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the sine of 30 degrees, that would be the same as the cosine of 60 degrees. And 60 degrees is right up here. I'll uh, put that 60 degrees. And of course, if we're talking radians, we would call that pi over 3. Uh, the coordinates of that point would be the cosine of 60, which is the same as the sine of 30, would be 1 half. And the sine of 60, which is the same as the cosine of 30, would be square root of 3 over 2. All right. And there's another special triangle that we looked at, the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And if you remember that, uh, we found that the sine and the cosine were both 1 divided by the square root of 2, which we usually write as square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to write this one. Well, first of all, let me get my angle, 45 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over 4. And these coordinates are uh, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And then, of course, we also have 0 degrees or zero radians, which gives us uh, the point um, one zero, meaning the cosine of zero is one and the sine of zero is zero. And let's go up here to uh, 90 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over two, and that gives us the point uh, zero one. So we know quite a bit about the first quadrant. We know the sine and cosine of 30 degrees. We know the sine and cosine of 45 degrees. We know the sine and cosine of 60 degrees. And we also know the sine and cosine of 0 and 90 degrees. Now, given what we saw before about reference angles and the other quadrants, that means that we know the sine and cosine of lots more than just that first quadrant. Uh, let me fill in the other uh, angles here. If I uh, keep going here, this would be 120 degrees, and then 135 degrees, and then 150 degrees. Those are uh, supplementary angles to 60 and 45 and 30, respectively. And then if we take 30, 45, and 60 and add 180 degrees to them, we get 210 degrees. Oops, I missed 180 here. Okay. 210 degrees. Uh, 225 degrees and 240 degrees, and of course this is 270. And then uh, this would be negative 30, or let's call it 330 degrees, negative 45, or let's call it 315 degrees, uh, and uh, 300 and, well, just 300 degrees, okay? So that's from zero all the way around to 360 degrees in degrees, just the angles that have 30, 45, or 60 as their uh, reference angles. And let's go ahead and put in the, uh, the radians that correspond to all those degrees. This one would, of course, be 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, pi, 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over, oops, 5 pi over 4, uh, 4 pi over 3, this is 3 pi over 2, this is, this would be 5 pi over 3, 
uh, 7 pi over 4 and 11 pi over 6. Okay, no, I didn't do the arithmetic for every single one of those. I've been doing this a while. I have it in my head, okay? But it's not hard to get, okay? You just subtract 360. Well, <clears throat> for each of these, you just subtract 2 pi minus pi over 6, and then minus pi over 4, and then minus pi over 3. It's really not difficult to get those degrees and radians at all. Now let's look at the sines and cosines. Well, what do we know? We know that this, well, this is the point, negative 1, 0. But this point here is going to have the same sine and a cosine that is uh, the, just the additive uh, inverse. So this is going to be negative root 3 over 2 and 1 half. This is going to have the same sign and the negative cosine, so this will be negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. This will be negative 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Okay? Going down into the southern hemisphere, we have uh, negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Uh, this one, I was actually just looking at 150, it's right above it. Uh, I'm going to have the exact same cosine and uh, just a negative sign. This will be negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. We're in quadrant 3, so everything, all of our sines and cosines are negative. And this will be negative 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. Getting into quadrant 4. Well, 330 degrees, I generally think of this as negative 30 degrees. So this is going to be the same cosine, root 3 over 2, and negative 1 half, a negative sign. This is uh, negative 45 degrees, so this is going to be root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. This is negative 60 degrees, so it's going to correspond to that. This is going to be, uh, oops, positive 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. Okay? Oh, and here we have the point 0, negative 1. Okay? So we know just from those two special triangles, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's uh, 16 different angles, right? And, uh, and all of their sines and cosines, and actually all of their tangents as well, because to get the tangent, you just divide the y by the x for each of those. Okay? This is a good thing to have at your, in, in your brain, all right? Now, I don't memorize this whole unit circle. What I do is I memorize the first quadrant, and then I know how to go from the first quadrant to the other four quadrants. If somebody asks me, what's the, um, what's the cosine of 4 pi over 3? I have to think to myself, okay, well, 4 pi over 3, that's in quadrant 3. If I subtract pi, I'm going, to have, I'm going to be at pi over 3. Oh, no, I know what the cosine of that is. It's a half. So that means the cosine of this is going to be negative a half. And sure enough, it is negative a half. Okay? So, uh, know, know this unit circle. It's going to come in handy. One more thing I want to point out, and that is... So, I put all the uh, positive measurements of the angles, but this is, of course, also negative 30 degrees negative 45 degrees, negative 60 degrees, negative 90 degrees, negative 120 degrees, etc., etc., okay? I want you to notice that if I have, let's take 30 as our example, 30 degrees and negative 30 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees and the cosine of negative 30 degrees are exactly the same number. The sine of 30 degrees and the sine of negative 30 degrees are additive inverses of each other. That's to say that one's positive, one's negative. And you can see that that's going to be the case no matter what your angle. As one goes up, the other one goes down, and you're always going to have uh, your y-coordinate, uh, the, the one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, and as far as your x-coordinate goes, they're always going to be the same. Well, what does that tell us? It tells us a fairly uh, uh, important little fun fact, and that is that the sine of negative x is the same thing, or let me call it negative theta, is the same thing as the negative sine of theta. Can you see that? I think you can see that. And 
it also tells us the cosine of negative theta is just the cosine of theta. Okay? The sine of negative theta, that's like the sine of negative 30, is just the negative sine of theta. It's just the negative sine of 30 degrees, negative one half. The cosine of negative theta, cosine of, of, uh, of negative 30 is root 3 over 2, is simply the cosine of theta, cosine of 30, root 3 over 2. This is, uh, uh, this is a good thing to keep in mind as well. Okay? Look forward to the next video. Bye-bye.